So carrying on from last time, we did the increments and decrements. This time, I want to have a go at branches. We can't actually branch yet, which is a which is a thing that you want to do, definitely. So branches are a bit like jump. Jump can just jump to another location in the anywhere in the program, and it can jump to any 16-bit address. The difference with branches is that they only have an 8-bit value to jump from, so they can only jump plus and minus a certain amount from where the program counter is right now. So the instruction is smaller and also they have these conditions, which is very important. So without a conditional branch, basically you, you can't really change the flow of the program. Basically, these are your if statements um, when you're doing a higher level language. They're formed out of this kind of stuff. So branch, if carry, flag, clear, if you did an arithmetic operation and the carry flag was set, then you might want to branch one way or you might want to branch another. It's got a special one for zero. So we might just have a go at one of these, um, maybe the zero flag or something like that, because we've got things that can affect the zero flag. Uh, yeah, there's only one addressing mode for these relative and it's the same on every single one. So it takes two cycles. It takes an extra one if the branch succeeds. That must be because it has to update the program counter if it's actually going to do the branch. And then it plus two if it's to a new page. And I imagine that's because the 6502 would do like an 8-bit addition and if it worked out there was a carry on it it'd have to do another 8-bit addition to change like a full 16-bit address somewhere so that would make sense but they all basically obey the same rules these relative addressing modes so I think the best thing to do is to try and just get this one done um, it's this relative addressing mode so it's an 8-bit relative offset, minus 128 to plus 20, uh, 127, is added to the program commander if the condition is true. There you go. Uh, as the program character itself is incremented during instruction execution by the effective address range, or by 2, the, as the program character itself is incremented during instruction execution by 2, the effective address range of the target must be within minus 226. Minus 126 and 129 br bytes of the branch. Yeah, so it's reading one it's updating the program counter when it gets the uh, branch on equal instruction or whatever. And then it's doing another one to read the offset. So it's, it's reading two and then it's going to branch from, it's going to update the program counter from where you are after that. So it's not, you're not actually branching from the instruction, you're branching from the byte after the instruction or whatever. So that's just to take into consideration, but hopefully we can get this one working. I'll make a new file for the unit test for it and I'll crack on with that one. Excellent, so um, I'll just get this one here and we'll call this the branch tests. Okay, now, um, so how, what we're going to do, we're going to do branch equal, did I say? Or is it branch zero? Uh, yeah, branch. So it's branch if zero flag is set. So it's branch. So it's branch equal to zero, really. So we're going to do a test for that. Um, we are going to let's just get rid of these for now. Um, we're only interested in the zero flag at the moment, and this is just going to be BEQ because there's only one addressing mode. Um. We don't know what we're doing yet, so we don't know how many cycles to do for this one. It could be two, it could be three, it could be five. <laughs> so, um, don't know right now. Uh, I'll continue to take a copy of the CPU. Um, so, what am I gonna do for this one? Uh, let's just try a simple branch forward. So the next byte in memory has to be has to be the number of number of bytes to branch forward. So let's say that we go uh, let's just go one let's just go one byte forward. Um, and that should increment the program count. So the program count will be at will be at 0 02 at the point and after this instruction's been read. The program count will be kind of here. But we're saying add one to it. So actually it would take us to there. <laughs> That's weird. I think this is how it's gonna work. So really what I wanna do, 
I want to put something here so I know that it's worked. And we've already got uh, we've already got increment the A register working, and we've actually got increment X working as well. So let's put um, right after that there'll be an increment X statement, and the one after that there'll be an increment A statement um, instruction, I should say. And then what we'll be able to do is actually test those registers to find out that it branched to the right place. So this one would be, let's say, yeah, the zero flag is is true. Do the branch, so the branch will succeed. So we would expect the A register to be incremented, but the X register wouldn't. I wonder if that's the best way to do this test because we're kind of using another instruction to do it. Yeah, let's try this. So it will be two to do the test. One, because it succeeds and it didn't go to a new page because we're still in the same FF page here. That should be it. So let's try that. Uh, is it called ink? Have I got it? Have I got it wrong? It is called ink. Why is it not? Um, oh, because it's increment and memory location. Oh, you can't increment the A register. Whoops. Let's do increment X, increment Y. Let's do it like that. So we'll, we'll do Y and we'll do X. Okay, this makes more sense. What we then expect then is this will jump over this statement and it will jump to this one and it will increment the Y register. So it will increment that to 43. So we're going to expect Y to be 43. X shouldn't have changed. And the processor status doesn't change on these. So I can just do this. Because I've got a, I've got a byte that I can read the whole processor status from. Don't need this then for these tests because this will never be true, I think, never be a thing I need. I think that I think that might be a good test. So BQ can um branch when zero is set. Oh, can branch forwards. Let's do that. I think that might work. Let's add the instruction or the opcode for the instruction, which is F0. Does that compile? Okay, so we should have a failing test. Yeah, instruction 240 not handled. So I'll, I'll just do this, do this one as it is for now, and then we'll add more failing tests to get these other things to um, fail or succeed. So I, oh, actually, this isn't expected three cycles though, because it's three cycles to do, it's three cycles to do this instruction that succeeded, but we also want to execute this as well. So it's three plus whatever this, yeah, we want to execute this just to make sure, just so that we know, actually, do we even need to, we don't even need to do this, do we? We could just, we can just read the program counter. That's a better way of doing it. Let's forget all this. And forget all this. Well, we just want to, we just want to read the program counter and we want to expect that it's going to be FF03. I think that's that's a better test, I think. Um, yeah. So we only executed that instruction. We only did this and this, but we moved the program counter not to FF02, but to FF03. I think that's good. So let's implement this. Let's do these down here. Okay, we read the first thing you did is read the instruction. Now we want to read the, we just want to fetch a byte from the program. So fetch a byte is taking a byte from the program, but actually incrementing the program count when it does it. So it needs the memory to do that. Fetch a byte. Um, This is the jump offset. And that would be just added on like added onto the program counter. 
So if you look there, I haven't tested if the zero flag is set or not. So in theory, is this, does this still work, this test? Can branch forward when zero is set. So it still fails, but it's got an extra instruction. Oh, because this consumes a cycle to do it. So that consumes a cycle to add the offset. I think this will pass now, but this is wrong. So this is where we would, yeah. So that I've made that pass, but notice I didn't check the, I didn't check the zero flag. So this is branch on zero. Uh, if the zero flag is set, we have to do something, but I didn't check it and that passes anyway. So that shows that you need more tests basically. So let's do another one that branches on, uh, so when the zero flag is false, this is the same test now. Um, so this is, this is BQ does not, does not branch forwards when zero is not set. So this one, I expect the program counter to be 02. Oh, and actually it's only gonna take, uh, it's gonna take less than, it's gonna take two cycles. That's right, because it, it takes an extra one if it succeeds. So this one should only take two and it should only go just, it should not branch because there was, because the zero flag was false. So we should have another failing test there, I think. Yeah, so you can see there the problem is, is, is that it actually took an extra cycle when it shouldn't have done. So that's, that's the part I didn't write in the other test. So now I can just get this one, get this to pass, but also keep the other one working as well. And the answer to that is that if the, if the zero flag, we only do that if zero is set. And that should get both of those to pass. Yes. So now we, we've definitely not done this um, new page thing. So let's get that one to work as well. So again, same test, except we're gonna branch forward by FF. So that should take us all the way forward, but into the next page. And this should take us to, oh, we can't go into the next page on that one because there is no next page. Whoops. Let's do a different, let's do FE on this. And that should take us to FF02. Now this is a weird one because, oh, the branch has to succeed on this one. So zero flag is set. The branch needs to succeed, so it's three because it succeeded, but it's gone into a new page, so it's five. That I think is correct. So this one is BQ can branch forward when zero is set. Oh, can branch forwards into a new page. There we go. So this high byte here is the page um, in the address, basically. So if that changes, which it has changed from FE to FF, then we should take five cycles. So that should be another failing test, I hope. And what has gone on there? Ooh, it just, just failed. Oh, because it, I don't know what it did there. Why did that just like miserably fail? What happened? Let's just see what it does. Uh, it goes in, it reads, um, fetches the instruction, gets the offset FF, offsets it to 01. Um, that doesn't seem right. Subtracts a cycle, and we've got two spare that we haven't used. So then it fetched to zero, and then it exited incorrectly. So that is what I expected there, so it's not worked. So in this case, I've now got to handle the fact that we 
when we change pages, we have to consume another cycle. Um, so we can only we'll only do that if it succeeds, and then we need to look at the program counter, and if the program counter, let's shift it right by. Um, what's the easiest way to do this? Uh, is it if I look at the Maybe I'll take a copy of the program count before. I think that's the way to do it. So, um, we just need to know that they're in a different page. So maybe the way to do that is if I shift that right by eight bits, and that is uh, not equal to that one shifted right by eight bits. So that what I'm doing is I'm just looking at that that high byte in each one of these, um, and I just want to know if the high bytes are different. I suppose there's there's other ways to do that, isn't there? You could, um, yeah. Let's just do it that way. Uh, and let's give that, just because that looks a little confusing, let's just give that a name. There we go. So that's less confusing as to what it's actually doing. Uh, we have to consume two more cycles. Okay. If that compiles, does it actually work? Nope, it doesn't. Um, looks like I... Looks like it still went wrong there somehow. Okay, let's, let's just debug into that and find out why that didn't work. So, we go in. We fetch an instruction, which is that we fetch the offset it, we are going to branch. We keep a copy of the old program counter, which is FE. Then we move to F, F, E, O, 1. Oh, the, I know what I've done wrong here. <laughs> uh, it's because this is, it's because I can't branch by uh, that amount because that amount that I've given it is a negative branch. I mean, let's just see if the page changed anyway. The page did change took two cycles, we consumed them all. Why did that, what was wrong with that? Oh, so it's, the problem is, is that I've got the program counter wrong, haven't I? Yeah, this doesn't work like this though. This, you can't branch by, this is like branching negative one because that's a good point actually, these are signed, these are signed values. So I actually, what I'd be better off doing is writing a simpler test for this right now. So let's write a test where we're just at the end of the page. So we're there, let's see, where would we be? F E F E F E. Let's do F E F zero. F E F one. And then let's branch forward. Um, let's branch forward by, uh, let's see. Maybe we get this to, it's just on the page boundary. Uh, we want this to be F E F E F D. So if we branch forward, that would go to take us to F E F F afterwards. If we branch forward by one. Um, F E from F F, we expect it to be F F zero zero. I think that's right. Right, that's confusing, isn't it? Let's just see if that that doesn't pass either. What am I doing wrong? Am I getting the program counter wrong here? Uh, why is that failure? What is happening here? It should have gone into a new page. Did it not go into the new page? 
Whoa, destruction not handled. Oh, wait a minute. I've screwed this up. Um, because I need to reset it. <laughs> in there. Right, I was thinking that's mental. What am I doing there? Right, try again. Let's just run it and see if it passes. Yeah, it does. So I think that's what I expected. Let's just go in there and make sure I did that right. So I fetch the instruction, which fetches the byte. So it's going to go by one byte. The program count is at FF, which is what I wanted. I go forward by one, uh, which took us to, yeah, sorry, it's FEFF, -F, and then it takes us to FF. So the page has changed. That's true. And it added the cycle. And the other ones are still passing, so they didn't change page, so that's okay. So I think that's that's pretty good. That's got me branching forwards correctly on that one. So really I need to be able to branch backwards as well on this same one. So let's try that. So copy this one. So can branch backwards uh, when zero is set. And let's just try and, well, let's try and not go outside the page this time. So if I do this at FE, so this is on a page boundary here and I'm gonna go backwards one, which will change the page. So that's not what I want. Uh, I wanna do, let's do CC there. And that'll be CD. And that would take us to CE. So that's where the program count would live next. Um, and we want to branch backwards by one. That takes us back where we were. Let's branch backwards by two and that puts us in an infinite loop. That puts us back at CC. So that should be there. And that's three cycles. So that's not two, that I want minus two, not two. I wonder if I can just put minus two in there for the test. Will that give me the right value in memory? Let's run it and find out. No, because it won't do the conversion for me. Let's do, let's put the minus two in. Maybe I can do this to, Whoops. Yeah, is it gonna let me do that? Yeah, I wonder if that's just putting, let me just check that's putting the right value in there though. What is it doing? All right, I wanna just look at that piece of memory, please. That's the piece of memory plus, I have to do it like this, FFCD. There it is. So, that's getting set to FE. Now I think that's right. Um, yeah, it's got. I mean, it's got the negative flag set. I think that's. We'll see. I think that's what I want. Right, that took me a while, didn't it? Did this? Didn't pass. Let's just run that again. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, that didn't pass. So where are we going wrong? Um, oh, instruction not handled, what? Why? What's gone on here? Uh, I've done this wrong. <laughs> okay, I've done that same trick that I just did last time wrong. Let's try again. Right, we're gonna, apparently going to run the right set of instructions this time. Okay, that didn't work. I think it's... Is it still crashing? Right, we get the offset, which is FE. So that's a thing. F E, yeah. Can I, what do I do with that now? Get the program counter. 
and that has yeah it's added it as a signed number we want to sorry it's added it as unsigned we want to add it as signed I suppose I've actually just got to do the same thing I did here um, but I've got to cast it to a signed value yeah maybe this is where we need an s byte so we've got a sign byte so most of the time we've been treating these as unsigned but now i really do want to treat it as signed because I'm, i want to add that on like that Let's just see if that fixes my problem. I mean, I think this will because I've cast it at one end and then I've cast it at another and it's probably going to make it work. But maybe we should get the, if this works, I'll get the compiler out and compile an actual little program. Yeah, it does. So let's do the same thing, but uh, I've got backwards and Uh, does not branch backwards when zero is not set. Let's do the same thing for this. So it's the same test, but with the zero flag set to false. And this one should just take two cycles and the program counter should go to the next one. That should still work because that's kind of like covered by other one, but we're just doing the same thing with the backwards as well. That still works. And we can also do, uh, should I bother doing the test if the page has changed? Because we've already got that covered with the forwards one. I won't do it. It's just an extra test that I know is going to pass in this case. Um, because I'm test the way I'm testing the pages means it's going to work. So what I really want to know is, am I actually doing this thing correctly? And this might be where I get the assembler out and write another little program to make sure that I can branch forwards and backwards correctly. I think that's a good idea because this could just be me fudging these tests and making them work. I'm not entirely sure that uh, what I've got here is actually perfectly correct. Okay, so what I wanna do is just have, that's just a label for loop and I wanna branch on branch on equal to zero to loop and that will give me an infinite loop but actually I need to make sure I've got the equal to zero so I'm going to load the accumulator with zero and that should just create a little program that loops backwards forever so let's just see that that compiles and that gives us our little test program so that first value here um, is the address of the program and then we've got A9, we're loading the accumulate with zero, A9, load the accumulate to zero, and then this is our F0, and there's FC to branch backwards by minus four, I think. That is a good little program. And actually it's so small, I can just copy that and we can just inline it, can't we? So it's almost what we've got um, so let's just do the same test that we did before with actually with just this these actual raw values it's a bit strange isn't it but I'm not even going to bother loading the program so it's A9 Zero zero F zero F C that in theory yeah I'll just put this here so we know what this program is. Um don't need this stuff anymore. And how many cycles do we expect for this? So we have 
the load accumulator with zero. Uh, what is that one? Load accumulator immediate expects two cycles. And for our other one, we expect two cycles plus one more because the branch is going to succeed. Yeah, in theory, that is going to work and we expect the program counter to be back up at A9 when it's finished, back up the, at the load accumulator. So that's a compiled program. So that's just a slightly better test. We'll just do another test for that one. I can branch backwards uh, and I'll put from assembled code. Because we did assemble it, we just pasted it in. Uh, if this still passes, I think this is good. And it does. So I'm quite happy with that. I think I would say that is branch on equal working, um, including all these weird page anomalies that you get. Um, so that's quite good. It's just a bit weird that we're using, we've only ever used the, the, the byte values as um, unsigned before, but this actually needs it to be signed because it's got this relative addressing. Uh, so that's not bad. So next time we'll probably try and get the uh, branch on not equal working and somehow we, sh we should probably try and refactor this code so that we don't rewrite this so that we just um, and we just change that condition. Yeah, we could do that. And then we can do the rest of these and then we've got branching working which is really good because that means you can start, you can almost see that you could almost write a program with this except we haven't got arithmetic <laughs> apart from that. But apart from not having arithmetic, I mean, starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel here because the status flag changes are really easy to do. Um, the branches look like they aren't going to take too long because they're all going to be very similar to this, um, except, you know, they're all going to be just different, they're testing different flags. So maybe we can get away without having to rewrite this a thousand times if we get this to work. And, and then we're just missing the arithmetic the operations and the shifts and we're, we're all good we're starting to get oh, on a few more we haven't got nop <laughs> but yeah we're actually starting to see something that might it's almost you could write a program in this at the moment so i'll get working on more branching in the next video